The Life, Love, and Leadership Podcast is a presentation of Marissa Q. Payne International, Dr. James Payne Speaks, and the Foundation for Successful Marriages with Rare Gem Productions. Learn more at SuccessfulMarriages.org. And here are your hosts, the doctor and the missus, Marissa Q. Payne and Dr. James Payne. Welcome back to Life, Love, and Leadership with Dr. James and Marissa Q. Payne. I'm Marissa Q. Payne. And I'm Dr. James Payne. And we're super excited to have you back for yet another episode of our Best of series. Yes. So I was thinking about um, the She Shed episode. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was episode eight, um, Let's Stay Together. But in it was when I discovered the She Shed. <laughs> Listen to this. Um, what's on my mind this week? Oh, 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 I know. She shed. She <laughs> we shed. Have got to talk about the she shed. What so, in the world is a she shed? <laughs> have you? You don't know about the she shed? I'm in the dark on this one. Okay, so honestly, this is new to me too, but I have been scrolling into these she sheds in social media and. I want one. Like, I need a she shed in my life. It's like this private oasis designed just for me in the backyard. So you know what a shed is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have like claimed the shed or reclaimed the shed for our own purposes. It's like... (laughs) The female version or of the man cave. Okay. Um, except but, it's outside. Huh? Except it's outside. We're and moving it's you sh- out the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's most important is that it's mine and you can't be there. <laughs> like I get to create it for whatever I want. It can be a paint studio. It could be a sewing room. Like I've seen wine caves. Like, um, it's a little tricky because, of course, the first thing I thought about that I would want mm-hmm. in mine would be a bathtub. Like, okay. oh, my gosh, like a sanctuary where there's like candles and the bathtub and the lighting and, you know, books and music, you know, like it's recessed lighting and like surround sound. All, all outside. huh? <laughs> Well, that's why I say, like, for me, it's a little tricky. I don't know if there's a she share with indoor plumbing. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but okay. um, the one that I saw was like amazing. It had siding. There was a mailbox, which I thought was great because, like, again, you don't have to come in. Like, whatever you need to deliver, you could just put it in the mailbox. <laughs> It had a deck. It was like double decker. It had a deck and a screen porch. So like, oh my gosh, I love screen porches. That's like my favorite thing. Um, this one had like a slide from the deck. It was like a rock climbing wall to the deck. It was incredible. Like, and I didn't even see what was like inside the actual shed itself, mm. but I was sold. Wow. And I just... I just, I need a she shed in my life. Okay. You think it's a good idea? Hey, if you like it, I love it. Um, Enjoy your she shed. We have to look into that. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, you don't really have a man cave, though. Like, does that make you sad? No, see, my whole house is kind of my cave. Oh. (laughs) Just being home, the whole space is my man cave. Yeah. Um, I feel like if everyone had either a man cave or and a she shed, like, majority of relationships would never end like Hmm. that's what it takes to build a love that lasts so having a a place to retreat yeah i get that to get away yeah i get that so yeah my my place to retreat is generally the golf course Uh, getting off to the golf course you don't like to play that's been determined (laughs) Uh, and so that's my retreat that's my sanctuary uh it's kind of just getting out so why do people need a man cave then i don't have one i know but like What's the big deal about the man cave? Well, the same reason that I guess people need a she shed is just a place to uh, get away from all the noise, enjoy some me time. We always talk about in relationships, there are are at least three lives. uh, You, me, us. And that's, you know, Mm -hmm. where men uh, have an opportunity to express the me and and just really 
unwind and, and you know, get away from. I know it's true because like my, I could see like the moms, especially moms of toddlers or small children, even teenagers, because I go through or young adults even because I go through this with my daughter. Like you can't even get privacy in the bathroom in your house. So <laughs> maybe that's why I want a bathtub in my she shit because I'm like, it's the only place, sacred place that I can go and get some peace and tranquility i think about um introverts and extroverts though so i'm like do extroverts want a she shed or is it just because i'm introverted that's a good question i would imagine extroverts may not need a she shed uh or, or they, they just bring the party like they yeah bring like it's friends. a community she shed. i think i saw one like that i saw like four or five of you know her girls going mm-hmm. and i was like oh party it's like slumber party or whatever like Interesting. I need a she shed in my life. So Interesting. That's what's on my mind in relationship news this week. Okay. Got it. <laughs> got it. Got it. So the reality is you still don't have a she shed. I don't have a she and shed. And the reason you don't have a she shed is because we couldn't work out the plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Speaking of plumbing, I did not know this, but I discovered that we have rough end plumbing in the basement. Mm. And I recently moved the office back to our basement. Mm-hmm. So we don't even need a she shed. Actually, new project. Huh. Bathroom in the basement. Bathroom in the basement. And so you're going to make the bathroom in the basement your she shed. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> that actually is a brilliant idea because nobody comes down there. I can hide. It could. Oh my gosh. So about the she shed. So I have to admit, um, the she shed really seems like, um, I don't know, your way of escaping from me. (laughs) (laughs) What's the difference? You love um, the uh, golf course. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Love the golf course. Love to get away. So I understand. I'm just teasing you. Yeah. So we're going to, instead of the she shed, we're going to have a she mint. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Yes. I love it. I'm so excited. Deal? I love it. Hey, deal. Let's do it. (laughs) (laughs) So I guess since you're getting your she mint, (laughs) uh, which is the she shed in the basement, uh, that's very clever. Uh, How about um, you no longer use the truck to move the trash can. Can we agree on that? (laughs) Why do you have, why did, why do you have to go there? So this is early on. We first started our podcast. You might remember uh, my wife actually moved a trash can in our garage with a truck. Like who does that? Check this out. One of the criticisms that I used to rail against my wife and, and mind you, let me set it up right. Uh, So we had just bought this uh, nice SUV, uh, probably had the thing for maybe six, eight months. And uh, she was 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 backing out of the driveway uh, and uh, in maneuvering the car, uh, she found the trash can in her way. And so rather than uh, moving the trash can, she used the truck to move the trash can. And then like a week later, we're looking We're like, wow, where did this? dent come from and she's like oh that must have happened when i moved the trash can with the truck and i'm like what are you talking about who moves a trash can with a brand new truck but for her you know it's it's a utilitarian vehicle it's for a purpose to move around if something needs to be moved in the interim while she's driving that just needs to happen it's not for look or show or anything like that because she doesn't covet things and so we had this whole big thing about you know that uh, and so, yeah, what what do you say to that? Where are you going with this story? <laughs> well, I, I'm going to um, the fact that I labeled you uh, as someone who was negligent of nice things. OK, and that was my criticism to you. More dialogue led to understanding you're not necessarily negligent of nice things. You just look at them differently than I do. Oh, I'm supposed to say something now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Okay, so first of all, I did not know 
that I think that's a terrible example um, for talking about criticism. Like, but um, since that's the one you use, that's the one I'll talk about. I have more. I <laughs> I didn't know. I mean, it, like you said, it's a it's a utility vehicle. So, and this is like the little, in my mind, the little plastic trash bin thing. So I'm just but it it's fought got, back though. It fought back. It's got a bumper. I'm just thinking. I'm like, no big deal. I'm just pushing it out the way, and I'm on my way. I did not know that it was actually. I had no idea, and you know, technically, we still don't know. I mean, maybe somebody hit me, and that's where it happened. I just, I'm like, oh, maybe that's what happened, but we really don't know because nobody got out and looked at the time. So it could have, it could have been something else. Yeah. And so I think as we consider criticism in this scenario, the cousins to criticism, uh, judgment and expectation kind of showed up as well, because I made a judgment uh, of you that, Mm -hmm. you know, you intended uh, to damage the vehicle uh, by moving a trash can with the vehicle, which just didn't make any sense to me. Right. And then you attack me. As a result of it, you label me as irresponsible, as, you know, all of these things um, and obviously never let them go because we're still talking about it. Mm, I don't know. Ten years later. That's show information. (laughs) What? (laughs) (laughs) But I think, um, you know, the, the, the important thing is recognizing that. Not only did you not intend for the damage to occur, uh, but I, I put that judgment there that, you know, you, you intended for uh, something to occur wrong. And I had an expectation that if it were me, if you were doing things the right way, uh, you would get out, move the trash can. In your mind, you're thinking, what, if I just move it with the vehicle, it's not going to cause damage and I'm quickly on my way. Yeah, I wasn't thinking anything about it. It was a, you know, a non-issue. Um, and for like, so like you said to you, this is a new vehicle and you would never, you know, try to move something or trash can like that would never occur to you. To me, it's a vehicle, a sport utility vehicle at that. Therefore, moving stuff or like, you know, this is a you can get up on the sidewalk and, you know, ride o- like that's the whole purpose of it. I'm like, woo, we got a truck now. Yay. I don't have to worry about. Have you ever seen a commercial where the truck moved the can? I'm just curious. Probably. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but and I, and I think that, you know, criticism on a day to day basis, you know, it's not usually as um, dramatic as that. I think it can be a lot subtler or a lot more subtle, I should say, when we kind of throw the little jabs um, or accusations at our partner. And I think they can become like part of our couple culture Mm -hmm. if we're not careful. Right. You know, where we're just saying, oh, you know, you're so, like I said, you're so irresponsible or you're so careless or you're so, you know, insert whatever it is that you say. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, There's nothing empowering or uplifting. Sure. The only thing that's doing is really dividing, right? Pulling your partner away from you. There's nothing about it that's drawing them to you. And really what you want to do in relationship is use language that endears your partner to you. And so how do you get away from verbally attacking the personality or the character of your partner? Um, And sometimes, you know, in all in all within your defense, you know, I am. Let's see, what word would I use? Like, I am a little less, um, you know, I I lose stuff a lot (laughs) or, you know, I mean, I, I am, I wouldn't call it careless. I just am a little less Mm. um, vigilant Mm -hmm. than you. You know, I think you are on the OCD side Mm -hmm. and you're (laughs) on the way on on the other side of the pendulum, you know, a little less, you know, I'm just not quite loosey goosey, but not too far from it. Like almost leaving your Mac in South America. (laughs) 
like at the airport like like but who does that on purpose <laughs> i don't do it on purpose but that's a great example right <laughs> uh, that's a great example so i was in paraguay and going through airport transportation it was actually my first time being international so the people aren't necessarily speaking english i was a little you know it's a little stress it's a little tense and i had multiple things in multiple baskets and i left my laptop um, when putting all my stuff back, I, I neglected to get my laptop out of the basket. And so when I got to, I think I, we were in um, Buenos Aires, I got into the airport security and went into my bag to pull my laptop out and realized that it wasn't there. And so went into this panic mode and, you know, started calling the airport and all of that, trying to figure out how to get my laptop. And so for you, you're just like, oh, my gosh, how, how could you be leave? so irresponsible? Yeah. This is a fifteen hundred dollar computer system or what have you. Yeah, that's not helpful. <laughs> right. And I didn't do it on purpose. Sure. Right. Like, so it's like that's a criticism mm -hmm. and completely not helpful right now. Right. So how do you break criticism? How do you what's the what's the alternative to it? What I was saying is that in that situation, yes, I deserved it. I mean, I don't deserve the criticism, but I definitely did something that was less than ideal. But I certainly don't need more people attacking me for it. I feel yeah. bad enough as it is. And so I always say, is there something that you need in the situation? Does it affect you? And if so, that's what you want to advocate for. And that's what you want to say. Right. So you want to talk about your feelings using I statements and you want to express your need from a positive vantage point. Mm. In the case of the laptop, for example, it wasn't your laptop necessarily. And so I don't know that necessarily affected you. So really in that scenario, what I needed from you was compassion. Sure. Um, and empathy, not necessarily criticism. Right. But let's say it was your laptop, you Which know. Which would I never mean, happen, but. Of course. For grins. Let's just throw it out there. Well, let's say I used you. Are you saying you wouldn't let me take your laptop? I'm saying let's say I had your laptop with me. Oh, no. <laughs> That's but why. let's say it was yours. So rather than saying, oh, my God, I can't believe you. You so irresponsible, et cetera, et cetera. And say, ah, I'm frustrated. Can you do everything you can to get it back? If you can't. Can you download from the cloud to see if we can recover the file or what have you like use I statements and express what you need from a positive perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, again, ultimately, you want to attack the problem, not, not the, person. the person, not the person. And that is more endearing. Mm. Right. Because, again, all criticism does is like take jabs. It's making withdrawals from your love bank. Yeah. And you want to make as many deposits as you possibly can. And yep. you do that over a long period of time and you find yourself in trouble. No, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So criticism, again, it's about attacking the person, doesn't address the issue. Uh, and it assumes a position of superiority. Mm. Um, and I think the third layer of that is it assumes negative intent mm. uh, and it, it assumes those things. And so when you make those assumptions uh, and throw those assumptions on your partner, you have to be careful. Uh, because nobody is intentionally looking to damage things. Nobody's intentionally looking to lose things or whatever the, the thing may be in your relationship uh, that you're critical about with your partner. Uh, it, it's not something that they are necessarily intending to do. So I think offering a thoughtful compassion to your partner and working to restore them is definitely the route to take. I just want to hear you say, can you just say all of that again? <laughs> I just want, I just feel we got it so on, we attracted got it on to you right now. <laughs> okay, show over. We out. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. <laughs> so, so, this is the funny update. Um, <laughs> I text you some damage on my car. Mm. With some scratches and yep. stuff. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I think somebody sideswiped me. And I immediately rolled my eyes. You didn't respond. And so, like, later when I saw you, I was like, did you get the picture of the car? And you accused me of bumping into something else. So you sent me this photo <laughs> showing me the damage, talking about somebody hit you. <laughs> 
I look at the photo, I see all this yellow paint. <laughs> and I said, you know, you just side swipe one of those beams at a restaurant or something like that when you go through the drive through This is self-inflicted. This is a self-inflicted wound. You don't have proof about that. And I don't think it's fair. I don't have proof. I didn't see it happen. But I know you. <laughs> And I'm still questioning how the great state of Missouri food around it gave you wow. a driver's license. <laughs> like, if I could just tell the truth. <laughs> so the answer is no. I will not stop moving things. I have a sport utility vehicle for a reason. <laughs> All right, so we're going to call that an episode of the Best Of Life, Love, and Leadership Podcast. I hope you're enjoying our Best Of, and if you are, will you please share it with someone? Uh, we look forward to continuing the conversation on Facebook or Instagram. If you have a question or topic that you want to submit, please do so at SuccessfulMarriages.org. And we will talk to you in social spaces. See you, bye. This is Life, Love, and Leadership. The Life, Love, and Leadership podcast is a presentation of Marissa Q. Payne International, Dr. James Payne Speaks, and the Foundation for Successful Marriages. Connect with us, find us, and follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to learn more about our guests, show notes, services, events, or to get involved. Visit SuccessfulMarriages.org. Life, Love, and Leadership is another positive production of Rare Gem Productions. Thanks for listening.